Hi, my name is Chris Boehner with FLIR Systems. I'm excited today to talk to you about the FLIR High Speed Data Recorder. This system is excellent if you can't afford to miss a single frame of data, or if you're recording high speed data from one of our 640, 512, 1000 frames per second high speed infrared cameras, or even our high speed HD thermal cameras for longer durations. Many of these can record 30 minutes, maybe even up to an hour worth of data with guaranteed zero dropped frames. Let me take a look at some of the interfaces on the back. Here we have CameraLink Full for interfacing to our cameras, and there's also a power connector and an eSATA. So this goes directly to the camera, this connects up to your PC or computer, and this of course is to power the device. Another nice feature about High Speed Data Recorder is that you can remove the drive shuttles. This is great if you're doing multiple tests. You can record, fill up the drives, pop out the shuttle, take this to data reduction, take your fresh shuttle, plug, plug it in, and you're off and ready to go again for another recording. It's also helpful if you need to declassify the system because now again I pull out the drive shuttle and it goes in a secure location without having to store the entire device itself. The high speed data recorder also comes in a second configuration for CoExpress. This one's very similar because you have the power connector and the eSATA to the computer, but here now we have CoExpress connectors, camera one and camera two, so single or dual link going to your camera. CoExpress is really nice in comparison to CameraLink because it's a little bit more secure and ruggedized connector. It's a coax cable with a BNC termination. In addition, the cable runs, you can go up to 100 meters with a high quality cable without any repeaters. So it's a really nice alternative uh, for connecting the camera to the high speed data recorder. All right, so now let's take a look at the physical connections uh, to connect up the camera to the high-speed data recorder to the PC. Here I have an SC8300 HD high-speed infrared camera and it has CXP on the back and this is what we're going to use today in our demonstration. First I want to connect up the gigabit ethernet which is right behind this cover here and I'll plug that in. The other end of the cable goes directly to the PC and this allows us to control the camera remotely with the PC, view the imagery live and be even doing analysis while we're also simultaneously recording the high speed digital data to the high speed data recorder. Um, so the second connection we're going to connect up here is a CXP connections and CXP0 will go to CXP camera 1 on the high speed data recorder and CXP one goes to CXP Cam 2 on the high speed data recorder. And this is a high speed uh, digital link that goes directly to the high speed data recorder. We also would, of course, need to plug in the power for the camera and any other relevant uh, connectors that we're using for our particular application. Once we have that set up, then we're going to get the high speed data recorder going. Now, since the camera is CXP, we're going to use our CXP CoExpress uh, connector here. You'll see that we have the power connector, the eSATA, and the camera link. Let me go ahead and connect up the power first. And there's a small uh, indentation here that goes on the top. So I plug that in. It's a bayonet, just a quick uh, twist, and it locks into place. Let's go ahead and connect up the eSATA as well. So it's just below that connector. Let me uh, get that turned around here. There we go. And then the next connections, of course, are from the camera directly to the CXP inputs. And again, camera zero on uh, link on the camera goes to camera one on the high speed data recorder. And camera one goes to camera two on the high speed data recorder. Now, once we have this all set up, and assuming I was applying power right now, we would see a blue light shine once we had the link connected to the PC. So let's go ahead and set up the link to the PC. Now here there's just two connectors. One is of course the eSATA that came from the high speed data recorder to the computer. And I'll plug this in now. The last connection was again the gigabit ethernet that comes directly from the camera to the PC. And mine happens to be behind a flap here on the very back. So let me plug that in. And now I'm all set up ready to go. The last step is to look in the software how we configure the HSDR for doing its initial recording and then how to actually do the recording using the graphical user interface in Research IR. So let's take a look at that now. Uh, once everything's powered on and, and running correctly, and it's a good idea to power up the high speed data recorder prior to turning on the computer uh, to help establish that link well with the, the core recorder. Once that's there, I launch Research IR and I'll go to camera, select, 
and it'll look out and see all the different cameras that are currently connected to the computer, in this case the SC8300 HD high-speed camera. I'll click on that, and in a few moments it'll connect up and we'll get a nice IR image. Once we have that image, then we can go up to Tools, Set up HSDR. That brings up a small dialog box that then I can choose to enable the HSDR, which of course we want to do, and then which type of HSDR I'm configuring. In this case, a CXP or CoExpress HSDR. So I'll choose that and start the initialization. It'll give you a warning that says that it's going to erase all the data on the drives. This again is only required for the very initial setup with this HSDR to the computer. So we want to make sure that if we've previously recorded data on a different computer, we've backed that up or saved it because when I set it up to a new, new computer, it's going to erase that. So I'll go ahead and say OK. It erases the drives and actually is formatting them for the particular camera. Once that's done, then we can go under the little HSDR dialog here on the left and we click on pair camera, pair the HSDR to the current camera. Once that's paired, now we get to set up the recording. Now, to set up the recording or edit the record settings for the high-speed data recorder is a different location than if we were recording data directly to the PC itself from the camera. So you'll see it's over here on the left in the high-speed data recorder section, and the options are slightly different too here. I can specify whether I want to record a certain number of frames for a certain time duration, or just when I push start, start, start recording, and when I push it, stop, stop recording. Then there's also periodic recording, which is more for a data logging situation, uh, where I'm not so focused on high speed, but more huge amounts of data that I'm going to be recording that may be larger than what my computer could handle on its own. Once I have that set up, I just go ahead and give it a name and a, a prefix, and we want to add a file counter, so for each file it gives it a unique name, or I can add a timestamp. I'm going to go ahead and say HSDR testing and start with a counter of zero. I click OK, and now I'm ready to record. And there's two options here. There's a record button that lets me start recording directly for the HSDR based on the record settings I've set up. And there's also one that says ARM. Now the HSDR, something that I didn't mention, is on the back of the HSDR there is a trigger input. And we could send a trigger pulse or switch closure to the HSDR that then tells the software downstream to start recording. And that's another unique feature. So we do have some triggering capability to start recording on the high-speed data recorder. Today I'm just going to go ahead and hit record. I'll do that and you'll see it's now starting to record. You'll notice that uh, it tells you the number of frames that are recording, the number of drop frames, the frame rate we're recording at, uh, and that's a good indicator that everything's working well. However, also notice we still have the live imagery over the gigabit ethernet link and we can control the camera, view that live imagery, perform analysis, while at the same time recording the high-speed HD imagery to the high-speed data recorder with guaranteed zero drop frames. So it's a really nice feature to be able to do both of those simultaneously yet independently. Once we're done recording, I'll hit stop here. You'll notice that there's a secondary tab called HSDR. I can double click on that and start viewing my data as it's playing back from the data on the high-speed data recorder. Once I have that set up, let's say that my interesting portion I'm interested here is between, uh, we'll set some play limits um, here in the middle. And then I can extract that data from the HSDR to the PC. And at that point, now it resides still on the HSDR, but I've extracted a copy of that small uh, subsection to my PC that I can do further analysis or export to other uh, drives or share with other people. Um, so that's a really nice feature. Of course, we always recommend that you back up your data from the HSDR uh, because if something ever happened to this drive, of course, you, know, you, you, might, you might lose your data. So as soon as you're done with your test, it's always a good idea to download the data. Now another nice thing, product that we don't have shown here right now is a download module. And essentially it's a high-speed data recorder without the ability to record, but more just playback. So remember earlier when I talked about being able to pull out that drive uh, and then send it to data reduction? Well, if data reduction has a download module, which looks similar, they simply plug in the drive and they can start processing the data, downloading it as necessary in the convenience of their lab or their office. Uh, rather, being on, rather than having to try to do that on-site at the mission. Um, so that's another really nice uh, feature or add-on to the existing HSDR. So that's the complete system. A fantastic solution if you need to record 
full frame rate HD or ultra high speed infrared data for long durations or if you can't afford to drop a single frame of data. If you have additional questions, please reach out to FLIR. Thanks for listening.